Good morning, friends. Today we are going to continue reading this book about animal senses. This is the chapter on their sense of smell. You can think about, what do I know about animals' sense of smell? Start thinking about that before I read. The smell of survival. Even if an animal is hidden and quiet, its enemies may still find it. That's because its smell can be carried through the air. Many animals just have to sniff the wind to tell what is around. With one whiff, an animal can tell if another is an enemy, a relative, a mate, or a meal. A good, a good sense of smell is very important for survival. If you were a deer, you would not give off any scent for about a week after you were born. That would keep enemies from smelling and finding you hidden in the woods or tall grass. After a week, your mother would lick you all over to remove your scent before leaving you alone. If you would, were a deer, you would have glands in your hooves that leave a scent trail when you walk. You would always find your mother or other deer by following their scent trails. You would sniff the wind to find out what other animals are nearby, especially before you went into an open field. Take a whiff of the wind. Smells are carried by the wind. An animal sniffs the breeze to smell the scents of creatures upwind from it. The wind that blows away from an animal carries its scent to others downwind. Send out your own scents and discover the importance of being upwind or downwind. To do this, you'll need dried grass or leaves and a bottle of vinegar with a lid. Go outside with friends or family on a breezy day and throw some dried grass or leaves up in the air. Watch to see which way they blow so you can tell the direction of the wind. Stand so that the wind is blowing on your back. You are the predator while your friends are the prey. Have one friend or family stand about two meters behind you and the other two meters in front of you. Open the bottle of vinegar and hold it out to your side so the fumes, which is the scent, can escape easily. Have your friend, each friend, yell when they first smell the vinegar. You should find that the friend in front of you or downwind from you was the first to smell the vinegar. As soon as that prey could smell you, it would leave. Your friend who is upwind could not smell the vinegar. You would be able to sneak up on that prey. When an animal is hunting, it's careful to stay downwind of its prey to avoid detection. Super sniffers. Imagine having a nose over two meters long. That's about as long as one of your parents is tall, like an elephant's. Not only is it a super sniffer, it, it's useful for many other things too. An elephant's tr trunk can suck up and hold enough water to fill two large soda pop bottles, as well as pick up things as big as tree trunks. The male proboscis monkey, that's this guy right here, his nose is called a proboscis, kind of like how we learned that um, the butterfly tongue is also called a proboscis and the bee um, tongue as well. The male proboscis monkey and male northern elephant seal both have enormous noses. Their huge noise noses make their voices louder and deeper, which may attract mates and scare off enemies more easily. You can see how the size of your nose affects how you sound. Speak normally and then pinch your nose to make it smaller while you continue speaking. What do you hear? You should find that your voice has a slightly higher pitch when your nose is pinched. Not just noses. Nosing around comes naturally to you, but how do animals without noses smell? Insects smell with their antenna. And catfish use their whiskers and barbells for picking up scents on a lake bottom or riverbed. An octopus smells and tastes with its tentacles. When a snake sticks out its tongue, it's collecting scent particles from the air. 
say it with a smell. You can tell what mood your friend is in by what she says or how she looks, but what about by the way she smells? Animals use sounds and sights to communicate, but smells are also very important for sending messages. If you've ever smelled a skunk's spray, you probably got the message, stay away, loud and clear. Read on to find out more about speaking with smells. Animals that live together in groups use smell to identify members of their own group. A mother antelope not only recognizes the scent of her herd, she can also find the special smell of her young within the herd. When a female moth is ready to mate, she releases a special scent to attract a male. Some male moths can smell a female more than five average city blocks away. People put up no trespassing signs when they want other people to stay away. If you were a fox, you would leave smells to warn others not to come near. These animals urinate on trees and rocks around their territory to let other foxes know that the land is occupied. When an ant finds food, it lets other ants know by passing along scent messages with its antenna. The ant also leaves a scent trail between the colony and the food so other ants can find their way. Think of dogs you've seen walking down the street with their noses to the ground or sniffing every bush, smelling everything as they go. Oh my gosh, that's my dog. Turn into a dog and pay attention to your sense of smell. Take quick sniffs of the air around you like a dog. What do you smell? Smoke from a fire? The grass or the flowers? Yourself? Can you smell differently with a long breath than with, with quick sniffs? Try taking a long, slow breath in through your nose. Try sucking in a tiny bit of air through just parted lips. Get down on all fours like a dog or pick up a leaf or a handful of dirt and hold it close to your nose. If it's safe and you check with your parents and you know it's safe, you can taste your leaf. What do you smell? Does it smell like it tastes? How would you describe it? What smell hits your nose the strongest? Once you've finished your observations using your sense of smell, Go to this document in Seesaw and record what you observed.